and welcome back to Living United. My name is Sandra Uni. I'm the Executive Director of the United Way of the Brown County area, and I'm very pleased that you joined us today. I have some really fun volunteers here that are with one of our partner agencies. We have Eric Kari and Beth Preckle, and they're with the Twin Valley Council of Boy Scouts. Well, it's with Scouts now, right? Scouting America. Scouting, Scouting yep. America. Okay, tell me more about that. Yeah, so, um, uh, you know, the Boy Scouts of America has been around since 1910. And, um, you know, we have, when we initially started, it was boys only. Then in, I think it was about 1973, we started incorporating girls into our exploring program, uh, which is a career-based program. And then uh, due to basically demands from families like, hey, this has been great for my sons, but what about my daughters? In 2018, our flagship programs, Cub Scouts and Scouts BSA, we started incorporating girls into our program. Um, and and over the course of time, it just frankly, in the last five years, six years has made sense, you know, to reflect our, or make our name reflect um, who we are today. Um, perfect example of that is is the, the YMCA or the Y, you know, traditionally was known as the Young Men's Christian Association. Well, you no longer have to be young, a man or a Christian to participate. <laughs> so as an organization, it truly reflects who we are and who we're serving today. Um, and so, yeah, it's definitely an, an officially we'll adopt the name in uh, February of, of next year during Scout, Scouting's anniversary, but we're already starting to get that out to people. That's so exciting. Now, Eric, tell me a little bit about what you do with with scouting and then I'll have you introduce Beth and what she's got going on. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so I actually work full time for scouting. Um, I, uh, I'm a product of the program, so grew up through the program and uh, now work full time for scouting. I've been doing that 21 years. Um, uh, my territory here in the area has kind of changed a little bit I, ever since I started six years ago, but but right now I serve, uh, directly serve kind of the New Ulm, Brown County area, um, as well as the Mankato area, um, and, and working with people like Beth to help, uh, you know, grow scouting, train leaders, you know, whatever whatever's needed to help make sure that we have successful programs locally in each of the communities that we serve. That's amazing. About, about how many kids do you do you have involved in the area? So, so uh, in the in the 15 counties of the Twin Valley Council, we have almost a thousand kids wow. um, uh, here locally. I think it's somewhere around 50 to 60 or so that are involved. Um, of course, us and many youth organizations took a hit during COVID, um, but we're starting to see those numbers start to, to come back and kids get you know, involved in the program again. Okay, now, and you have with you Beth. Beth. Beth is uh, one of our local Cub Scout leaders. Uh, she's been very active with the program. And Beth, you want to tell I am, about yourself? I am a c assistant Cub Master with PAC 51 in New Ulm. I too grew up in the, in, with the BSA program. My father's an Eagle Scout and was a Scout Master. And when he said the venturing program, um, I was a venture Scout oh. when I was a kid. So that's where I started with Scouting. And then when we moved, to Hanska um, about almost 11 years ago now and my oldest was old enough to join the C Cub Scout pack. Um, I was volunteered to be the Cub Master. Don't you love PAC that? Yeah. yeah, we usually jokingly say that voluntold. Voluntold, yes. Yeah. yes. Voluntold. Um, so now I'm in a transition period because my youngest now will be going on to the troop in the spring so now we're finding leaders to take over everything that I did so I can go so to the troop. So you can move and, with yep. progression. Makes sense, yeah. I'm a big supporter of scouting. I know you and I have talked. I was a Girl Scout for over 30 years and my kids were in scouting and we, um, my son was in scouts. So I just see nothing but value with that program because it's just so good for them socially and just a confidence. I think that's the biggest thing. Scouting can be such a confidence builder. Now, part of that is. Yes. Tell me more. Yeah. So uh, you know, the Pinewood Derby race um, is very iconic with scouting. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a, an opportunity for uh, kids and their parents or grandparents or whomever to work together to build a car. Um, it basically is a block of wood, and they can cut it out like however they want. Uh, typically, we encourage the, the kids to, you know, do as much of it as they can, um, and then they get to race it down a track uh, against friends, and yeah, it's really cool. I know you guys have had a wonderful yep. race. And Pack 51, we, we do a race in March every year. Um, Every, almost every kid builds a car and then we also have an open class that way if mom and dad or brother and sister or grandparents want to build cars they can come in and join our races too. But all the scouts they race against each other 
Um, so we have big trophies that I order and each year it's a different trophy and we've got um, four different trophies that we use right now. Um, we've got a first, second, and third place and then we've got a best in show which is voted on by the kids. So before any of the racing takes place, the kids vote on who has the coolest looking car. Okay, so it's all looks on It's that all one. on looks, yep. The kids That's like great. to, you know, and they come up with, oh, this year we had the school bus of death from one of the parents. We've had hot dogs. We've had, you name it, the kids come up with everything. It's not fun. I love to see the creativity of the kids come through with the cars. Yeah, I remember mean, working with our son and the, the ideas that he had and how he wanted to incorporate them into the Pinewood Derby car was, was quite the process. But yes. yeah, so you said they race in March? We race in March, yeah. Okay, and so when do, you, when do your kids start working on their cars? Um, we usually have them start, usually they have their car kits that we have them able to purchase or give them to them in December. Okay. Um, and from December till March is when they have to work on their cars. Fine tune it, fine yeah. tune it. Well, we know about the Pinewood Derby. That's very famous, that's kind of iconic. How about popcorn? That's my next iconic thing with, with scouting because that popcorn is so good. Absolutely, it is. It's, there's some great flavors this year, and uh, I don't know you guys want to talk about what you guys do locally to, to communicate to families or people in the community. So September 21st is our opening for popcorn sales this year. Um, you can, this year you'll be able to, you know, if you want a storefront sale, you'll be able to find us at hy V and Runnings and Walmart this year. Um, and there might be a few other places in town as well. Or some kids go door to door. Um, some kids call up family. So it all depends upon what the youth is comfortable with. No, when I remember back, there was just basically two kinds of popcorn, plain and butter, you know? And now I looked at last year and, and had a hard time choosing. So anything new and exciting with the popcorn world this year? I think year? we have five different varieties of popcorn. Yeah, the, yeah. there's there's nothing different from last year because actually everything was a pretty good seller. They kind of <laughs> throw in some different things depending on, you know, kind of what are the popular trends yeah. and snack foods. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, you know, my personal favorite is the Unbelievable Butter. Yep. Um, but yeah, they have uh, <laughs> chocolate covered caramel corn. There's, um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think, a salted, a salted popcorn, a pre-pop, and, it, and it's more products are the pre-popped. You know, people just are looking more for those kinds of things versus something they could throw in the microwave. Or, really? Or when I was a scout, they well, I think but you could we still, still get. still have the jars oh, of yep. popping corn, and yep. that is a very good seller here in New Orleans. <laughs> yep. So yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna make something that's a little healthier, the other thing too that I think sometimes people uh, don't realize is if they, if somebody says, hey, I'm either allergic to popcorn, I don't like popcorn, or that's just not for me, or hey, in my case, I buy, I buy a few things of popcorn but at some point I just I, I just can't store that much popcorn so um, we have the American heroes and so people basically says hey I'll give you a dollar ten dollars a hundred dollars whatever they want and what we do is we work with trails N and they take that dollar whatever dollar is donated and they uh, purchase uh, popcorn and then we donate it to uh, you know, those in the military, uh, those uh, fire, police, ambulance, all that, and, and just as a way to say, hey, thank you for, for serving uh, our Neat. communities. And so it's a great way for people to, to both support scouting because the kids still make, make off of what they would if you bought a product, but instead the product gets donated to, to a worthy that. cause. So. I love that. That's great. Um, when we lived in Texas, there was a lot of very active scouting there too, and I remember they did that every year, and they, would, they had companies that would match them and do all kinds of crazy stuff to get lots of popcorn to, to people who enjoy it. Absolutely. That's great. Now, um, I've seen some things, heard a little rumor, there's this big camp, camping experience coming, the Expo 2025. Yes, uh, Expo 2025, uh, it's something we do every three years, and I don't remember, Beth, did you guys, uh, did you personally attend that last I did. Time? You wanna talk a that, little bit about what you guys, some of the exciting so things you did? The last Expo was at the Brown County Fairgrounds. Um, that was, the kids had fun. They, you know, they tie-dyed t-shirts that they still wear. <laughs> um, we did, what was it, three different belt loops we were working on, so like um, different projects uh, that are, how do I want to say it, like grouped around a different item. Like one of them was digging for dinosaurs, digging in the past. Um, robotics, airplanes, making paper airplanes, learning how to different, do the different folds. Um, the 
was it the National Guard was out there with their obstacle course and the kids had a lot of fun doing that they had the canine units out there um, and the kids got to see the canine units and talk to different officers as well um, we had a scouts own church service on Sunday morning that was very nice um, a local minister came out and led a church service for the kids um, what else do we have out there? You know, and there was, I mean, there really, there was just activities for, for all ages, um, you know, kindergarten through, you know, age 18. Um, uh, we kind of dipped our toe in the water because one, it was just right after COVID, you know, about a year after COVID. So it was like, you know, what does this look like? So we're, we're really uh, excited about this next year um, because we're definitely gonna really push the public, uh, you know, opportunities that are available um, to come out. And again, it will be at Brown County Fairgrounds um, uh, in uh, the spring. Um, and we'll be getting some inf more details worked out over the next few months and then make announcing it publicly. Uh, but there'll be activities that are geared towards elementary age students. There'll be activities geared towards junior high and high school students. And then there'll be stuff that can then overlap. Just the other day, I had a conversation with the New Orleans Sports Fisherman and they're really excited to come out and do do some activities. And when you think about that kind of group, you think, oh, we're going to take the kids fishing. And they said, absolutely, we could do that. But they're going to talk, do some education and some some uh, some fish identification and just some things that you know to help uh, you know just really help kids have a, a better understanding of what it, what is fishing and that what are all the amazing. aspects. So yeah, so we're, we're in just in the in the beginning phases of, of finding partner organizations to come now, in. Now this is more than just one day, right? It's more than an afternoon. It is. It, it's all weekend. So all it, weekend. yeah, it'll start Friday. It'll end Sunday. Most of the activity will be on Saturday and that'll be the public day. Um, but definitely there'll be lots of activities going on. Um, last time we had a, 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 a um, a helicopter, I don't know, uh, what do they call it? Uh, some sort of military t t military plane came in and, and it was really, really cool. Um, so yeah, so there'll be lots of activities and people should be on the lookout for it because it's gonna be a, a big thing. We're, we're anticipating four to 500 uh, people oh attending. Oh my gosh, so. that's so exciting. And, and they'll all be camping on the ground. Yep. yep. And oh. it's just as fun for the adults as it is for the kids. Yep. Yeah, I remember those days too, as when I was a leader, that was, half the fun was getting to know the people that I led with. So that's neat. All right, so September 21st is your kickoff with your popcorn, yes. right? And then you threw me a couple dates. You said September 24th and September 26th. Yeah, so um, for families that are interested in signing up for scouting um, or just getting more information, those are our kind of our sign-up nights. We're doing those uh, again September 24th and 26th at 6 p.m. at Jefferson. Uh, we'll be in the cafeteria, um, but you know, just come on out, um, learn more about scouting, get signed up. Um, one of the cool things that we're doing this year um, is uh, uh, when you come out, we kind of call it, a black, uh, if you will, a Black Friday sale. Come on out. We will um, give you $25 off your registration fee. We'll provide your, your child a free handbook for their age. Um, we will provide them a, a model rocket, which they can build at home. And then uh, coming up on October 12th, um, we're doing a weird science camp. Uh, we're anticipating you know, four to 500 people to come out for that. And it's open to the public as well. Um, and uh, new kids in scouting will get to, sh to build and shoot off a rocket about 500 feet in the air. It's going to be really cool, um, but the entire family can come. So, so there'll be, I don't know, I think right now we're up to like 25 different activities. There's more stuff going on that people can get done in the day. We're making oobleck, we're doing uh, uh, elephant toothpaste, um, we're doing some stuff with uh, robots, we're shooting BB guns and bows and arrows, uh, doing a little fishing. So yeah, there's just tons oh and, and, and everything is geared around STEM. STEM is, you know, a big thing right now. So it, it's really exciting. So we're, we're pretty pumped about it. It's something we've never done before. So. Um, definitely something to be on now, the lookout. Now, some people might be, might have heard that term STEM, but what does that really mean? For so, maybe if we have a viewer that's going, what is that? Yeah, so so STEM is is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, we are throwing in a couple of of we'll call them art activities. So so another term is STEAM. So science, technology, arts, uh, engineering, and mathematics. Um, so yeah, so that's that's kind of the buzzword around. A lot of schools are doing STEM activities yes. and getting kids excited about those careers. That is amazing. That's so fun. And so, um, how many kids do you see? Is there a big turnover? Like, how, do you anticipate a certain number of kids that 
that usually join each year? Do you see kind of a trend, a pattern? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we always are having new kids join the program, um, typically in the fall, uh, usually September, October is when most kids sign up. I mean, they can come join any time, but usually those are the key months, um, and then sometimes in April. Um, but yeah, you know, we're right now we're planning for about 300 new kids across our 15 county area, so we're pretty excited about it. Um, the, the, the local program here in New Ulm is excellent. They do amazing activities. Um, I believe they're going to go, the, the troop, the older kids are going to go to Philmont, I think this next uh, next summer. So they're going to be doing a backpacking trip. So lots of cool, exciting things that, that are going on here, just here locally in the community. Amazing. Amazing all the things you guys do. So we mentioned all these things, our sign up night and weird science camp. What if there's someone out there that goes, you know, I've got a little time on my hands. Um, and I, I know a little something about scouting. Is, uh, what about volunteer opportunities? Yeah. Um, There's you... always volunteer opportunities. Um, you know, you don't have to have kids to be a leader. That's the best thing about scouts. Um, I became a leader before I had kids. So, <laughs> and you know, it's, you meet a group of people, uh, you know, the adults, are one thing they're their own group of people you get to know each other you hang out together outside of scouting outside of your kids just to make friends as an adult because even as an adult it's hard to make friends these days yeah you know where do you meet them exactly <laughs> scouting is a good place to meet other like-minded parents as well you know? okay yeah. so what if I have um, a real interest in say electricity how could you use me sure uh, you know there's definitely opportunities at, at all levels to you know the kids work on at the Cub Scout level on adventures at the Scouts BSA level they do merit badges um, but you know there's definitely different adventures geared towards different activities and kids are interested in, and, and there's more things kids can can do than they have time to do um, but but yeah if somebody has an interest and says hey I want to show something I mean there's opportunities to actually you know, actually help them work on an adventure or a merit badge. Um, there's an electricity merit badge for the older kids. Um, or sometimes it's just, hey, this is a cool thing for kids to see and learn. And, and sometimes things turn into field trips. So, I mean, there's lots of opportunities. And, and volunteering does not necessarily mean, hey, I'm going to make a year-long commitment. It might be, hey, I'm going to come in one time and do one activity. And, and that's okay. We need those people too. And so there's lots of ways for people to get involved. And I find most people are interested in doing things that either they do as hobbies or careers or things they just, just feel comfortable with. And so and, and sometimes that's where we have to start with people is it starts there and then hey four or five years down the road they're they're doing bigger things because hey that's how they started doing one well, and activity. that's how volunteering starts it kind of snowballs kind right. of dip your toe in the water and realize it's kind of fun yeah. and you keep on going that is amazing that's great so tell me a little bit you were a scout for how long uh, so I've professionally been 21 years, but as a youth, I was involved here for 10. Okay, and how many years have you been involved? My first We Below Experience camp out, I was six months old. So that was 42 years ago. Wow, <laughs> wow. Scouting goes on and on. It doesn't really matter. You know, the program might change a bit, but the bottom line is it's a great activity for kids. You know who your kids are hanging out with. Makes mm -hmm. you feel a lot more secure in a, in a, in a mm -hmm. world that can be a little unsure sometimes. Um, Eric, you yeah. have a yardstick. Yes, yes. So it's funny you say that. So the, you know, the the thing, and I have a, I have a preschooler, he's, he's four years old, and he'll, he'll be able to start Cub Scouts next year. And one of the things I always like to tell families too is, is you don't have to have grown up through the program to get your kids involved. Um, you don't have to, you know, we were legacy families where, you know, we were in Scouts as a kid, but there's lots of families today that aren't. So, you know, one of the things that I like to tell parents is that right now, if your kid is, say, between the ages of, say, five and 10, um, you know, that's our Cub Scout level. That That is a time where, um, you are the number one influence on your kids' life. Number two is, is teachers. And so if you think about this yardstick, you know, there's 36 inches, so each inch represents about two years of a person's life. So when we talk about that five to 10 year old age range, we're, we're talking about this much. This is literally the amount of time you have as a parent to point your kid in the right direction, give them the positive values for the rest of their life because once they hit that uh, five inch mark, you know, about 10 years old, parents become less important in a kid's life. It becomes friends, it becomes social media, everything else. And so 
we have such, such little time and, and, and they have all this time left in their life. We have literally this time to make that positive impact. And that's what scouting, why scouting is so important is we're teaching kids values. Yes, we talked about the Pinewood Derby races and popcorn and the different, different activities and fun stuff kids get to do, but scouting is fun with a purpose. There's a purpose behind it all. And, and I like to say scouting can be your, your partner in parenting. We're gonna help you instill the values that you want for your kids when they grow up and we're not sitting around saying, okay, today we're gonna to talk about what it means to be trustworthy. I mean, there'll be a little bit of that, but we're, we're, we're teaching it in a fun way that kids don't realize they're learning something. And, and we don't talk about something one time and then expect them to remember. It's, it's every year we're reiterating things. And by the time they're you know, in high school, things are, they have much more, they're much more able to reason and understand. So we're ta able to talk about things more uh, in a more complex way. Whereas a kindergartner, you know, uh, you know, be talking about trustworthiness is, is, you know, a very small conversation and <laughs> at, their, at their level. So, and, and that's the great thing about a program is it's age appropriate. So it's not like we're teaching kids, you know, at that kindergarten level, we're teaching them first aid, but we're teaching them what is a Band-Aid and how do you put a basic first aid kit together? By the time they're you know, in high school, we're talking about CPR and AEDs and becoming CPR certified and what does that mean? Because again, they, they can understand and reason more. And so uh, again, I, I encourage parents to think about what you want for your kids and, and scouting is a great place to get them involved. And the other piece I think is really important is this allows you the opportunity to do something with your kids. I have never heard a parent say, oh man, I wish I spent more time away from my kids or more time at work. It's usually just the opposite. I wish I spent more time with kids and, and scouting gives you that opportunity to spend more time with your kids and your family. And that's the nice thing about the program. It's, it's a family-based program. So bring the whole family. And it's cumulative, like you yep. said. And you just build on one skill and it goes higher and higher and higher. And the ability to have, um, I really like the fact now that girls are a part of it. Um, just, it is, it's so much more inclusive than it used to be. So I love that. I love that. Wow, a lot of stuff with Twin Valley Council. Yep. Amazing. We stay busy. Yeah, I would say <laughs> so. So the first thing we should be looking for is sign-up days. Yes, yeah. Okay. Now, if they want to sign up um, and they can't make it one of those days, what's your contact information? The, the best place to go, because uh, depending on where they live, um, you know, they may, it may be a different context. So the best place to get all the contacts is beascout.org. That's a national website. They go there and it's, it works off of Google Maps and they can find their local program. They type in their zip code. That's a fairly easy way to do it. Um, they can also go to twinvalleybsa.org and they can get information there about our local units. Um, otherwise, you know, the local pack here is on Facebook, a uh, yep. great way to connect with them there. Um, you know, frankly, if you just Google, you know, uh, Cub Scouts or Scouts New Alm or wherever they're from, a lot you're of times gonna find you're going to find something comes up. That, that's the easiest way to um, connect with people, you know, where, wherever they're at. And, and again, if they go to BeASCOUT.org or they contact our office, uh, which is out of Mankato, we'll get them connected with their program no matter where they live. That's amazing. That's awesome. And if you are looking at joining a troop or a pack, interview several packs or several troops. I mean, because one troop, you know, if you have a kid that really doesn't like camping, <laughs> there might be another troop out there that doesn't have a huge camping program, but might have a huge program in something else that their kids are really interested to. That's neat. Where you have another troop that are really into camp out every month, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah, there's different troops for different kids and yeah. Oh, that's neat. I didn't realize you could do that. So yep. that's great. It's kind of like shopping. Yes. Yep. The best yep. fit. Yep. yep. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming today. I always love um, the Living United segments where I get to actually see partner agency folks. And a lot of times it's just emails back and forth, but it's always so fun to see you guys when you come in. And, and uh, between uh, New Cat and KNUJ, our partners with the Living United, we can't do and get this information out like this. So. So thank you very much, Eric. Thank you, thank you very much, Beth. And thank you for tuning in and being Living United with the United Way of Brown County area. Thank you.